Michael Thomas, Cincinnati Bengals, AFC champion. Welcome back to Sports <laughs> Spectrum, buddy. Man, thank you so much for having me, Jason. It's, it's crazy, man. Uh, uh, I don't even have the words right now. I'm feeling yeah, describe them. I mean, what's the emotions that you're going through? I mean, you're an AFC champion, and, you know, four months ago, you weren't even on an NFL team. Oh, exactly, man. It's the biggest thing. Something I've stuck with is <laughs> this year is God's plans are far greater than ours, man. And uh, I was content. Like you said, man, when we talked this this summer, you know, I, 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 had, I wasn't signed anywhere, but I wasn't stressing. You know, I knew, like, God has a plan for me regardless of what that is, but I was I was very content and ready to transition if I needed to, right, Jason? And then to get that call from Cincinnati, I think it was, what, week four, week five, whenever they played the, uh, the Thursday night game against the Jaguars. Okay, well, I'm given an opportunity. You know, some familiarity there with uh, Lou Anarumo as a def defensive coordinator. Uh, had high respect for, uh, from their special teams coordinator, Dan Simmons, and I had I, I held him in high regard too, just from battling against him a few times. And to to sign with them at that point, you know, when I again I thought my career was you know probably coming to an end. I was soccer dad, taking my daughter to school every morning, and you know soccer practice after uh, afterwards. And to sign with a team and still get another opportunity to play and help contribute and get all the way to the AFC championship, win it. And another chance to the Super Bowl, I mean, a lot of emotions, man. I was crying after the game, you know, like. Yeah. <laughs> winning for those guys, because they gave me the opportunity to, young players want to win, win it for me. Like, Uncle Mike, OG, man, it's for you. Like, it's, it's real, man. It's well, real. there's this picture that you posted on Instagram. There's actually a couple pictures after the game when you guys beat the Chiefs and, and the Monday after. Uh, and you got this cigar on your mouth and you're holding that AFC championship trophy, just pure joy that I sensed on your face. And then the next day posting another picture with your team. And you talked about God's plan um, being far better than our own. Um, I want to hear about that locker room and what that was yeah. like after that game in Kansas city, a lot of, a lot of cigar smoke, I presume with all the pictures, but it felt like there was just genuine joy among being able to celebrate this with your teammates. I mean, that's really what it was, man. It's just, obviously, God's put in so much work. And we always believed. We believed in one another. Uh, what do you call it? You said it, you know, you got to be able to, take, you know, go with the ebbs and flows of a season, the ups and downs. Uh, but never, no one ever wavered. You know, nobody ever lost faith. Uh, we knew that we were all there for a purpose. We knew that we just had to trust in one another and just keep fighting, man. And, you know, we, had, we have a special group. A uh, group that really cared about one another, uh, that that wanted to see, you know, our teammates and our coaches and the whole organization just succeed, man, and just kept fighting. And so after that game, bro, it was just a lot of emotion, a lot of celebrating, thanking God, praising God. Uh, like you said, there was a few cigars that were lit. You know, you might have seen some smoke. Uh, I might have even seen a couple of, you know, adult beverages, you know, shared. <laughs> but, 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 oh, man, it was just, like you said, pure, pure joy, bro, and – you wouldn't, it's hard to even put it in words, man, but you wouldn't trade it for anything. I know I wouldn't. I wouldn't trade that feeling and having that experience. You know, I wouldn't trade that for anything. Three amazing wins in the playoffs, two of which came down to um, your kicker's right leg. Um, when you're on the sidelines in a moment like that, because I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm watching as a fan. You know, I'm in my house and we're watching the game on the couch and I'm nervous. I'm standing up. I'm excited and I'm not, a fan of either team in the sense of having a dog in the fight. I'm just looking for a great game. I have to imagine when you're on the sidelines, I, I really, I don't even know what that's like. I should say when you're on the sidelines, when you're there on the sidelines and you're at that moment, whether it's against Tennessee or against Kansas city, the week after, are you super nervous or are you, you know, like a lot of fans, I'm guessing, or are you, are you kind of calm in those moments as you're getting, you know, just as, as a player, as a teammate watching on the right. sidelines. Right. I mean, anytime, you know, the, the game's coming down to, you know, a last second field goal, regardless if it's the other team, your team, whatever. I can't even lie, especially with this squad. It's not really nervous because Evan has proven that he can perform in those type of situations, right? 
And, you know, he, the shooter, you know what I'm saying, all that type of celebrations with him and the golden leg, you know what I'm saying, all, all those type of things. I mean, he's earned that, though. He's earned that. And these moments are big. They're critical. Um, but with this team or any really, really any time I'm in that situation, obviously, it's outside of my control. I'm not on field goal block, you know, to protect. I'm not kicking, I'm not snapping it, I'm not holding it, I'm not kicking it. So that's one of those things where I just got to have faith. But when you got a teammate like Evan, and I see the, the work that he puts in, I see the work that, you know, the snap holder, Clark, uh, Kevin, they put in all the time, man. I got confidence. We have confidence, man. And you just got to have faith. You just got to have faith, man. And, and, and to see it go in, then you see the emotion. Dude, it's, it's, it's real, man. It's real. But yeah, nah, no nerves. Just, just like knowing you and understanding you don't have any control. But I got faith that he's about to make this kick. Do you understand yet? Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. The magnitude of what this means to the Cincinnati fan base. And I remember, I know a couple of guys, a pastor who's out in South Dakota. I know a, a guitarist for a band that's living, you know, uh, in that area. And they're both diehard Cincinnati Bengal fans, right? Seth Morrison and Adam Weber. And they have talked about how much just that first playoff win that you guys had against the Raiders meant because it had been 31 years. I think you were just born <laughs> the last yeah. time the Bengals have won a playoff game. So do you understand, and I'm, I'm guessing you do at this point, the magnitude of what this means, this incredible run and this opportunity for you and for your team, but also for those Cincinnati fans? Oh, absolutely. We feel it, man. We feel it. To, especially, we got a home playoff game at that against the Raiders. And to deliver that win and it hit how, you know, excited that crowd and how loud they roared when, you know, uh, Jermaine Pratt caught that, you know, the, the, the interception to steal the game. I mean, you saw, you know, like grown men and women crying. And like you said, I didn't, you probably, you heard about the history. Oh, we're, we're breaking records and barriers about 31 years. I wear 31. Oh, some significant. Like, no, but then you see the emotion of the fans and you see how much it really means to them. Then you starting to realize, oh, wait, no, no, this was special. Like, this was special. And any, all the players who have been here and enduring coaches, like I said, Darren Simmons been here for what, 22 years, 23 years. That's all they talked about. The, 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 you know, the staff, the, the, the cooker, you know, the, the women who cook, the women who, 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 who do, you know, whatever their roles are for the organization, but they've been here since 1990, 1988, when they were in the Super Bowl, to see them emotional, you know, when we walk back in the building on the Monday, when we're about to leave on a Friday, and they're like, y'all don't understand, like, we just, we're so happy, and this group is just so different, we love y'all, like, the support is real out here, man. And you just, we, you just feel it. You just feel it, man. And, and I wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't want to be a part of any other group. I'm so glad God graced me with this experience because since my rookie year, when I went to the Super Bowl with the 49ers, I've never, you know, I haven't experienced anything like this. And I was on practice squad then. I didn't even actually get a chance to play. I remember praying for opportunity to get back to a game like this so I can actually play and contribute or be in a situation like this and to have a role and to see the impact on the people of this city, the people in this organization. It's real, bro, and it's, it's a special group. And you know, I just thank God again for gracing me with this experience. Yeah, now you get to go out to Los Angeles uh, to play the Rams. They get a home game in the Super right. Bowl for the second straight year. But <laughs> but it's a Super Bowl, and I know Cincinnati is going to travel well, and you're going to see a lot of that orange and black uh, you know, fan base because it, it's not a home game in the sense of how you can buy tickets. You actually have to – you know, the Super Bowl is different than just a regular home game in the sense of how ticket allotment is distributed. But I promise you there'll be a lot of Cincinnati fans walking around yeah. the streets of Los Angeles as well. I want to ask you this as we wind down, Michael, and I really do appreciate your time. I'm so happy for you and so excited for this opportunity as it continues for a one more game. When you think back to where you were October 4th, the day before you signed with Cincinnati, and where God has brought you to now, what do you think is the biggest lesson thus far because you might have a new lesson in the next couple of weeks that takes right. shape but what's the biggest lesson thus far that you think the lord has shown you over the past three to four months since this opportunity with the bengals has has taken shape um uh touched on it i think when you asked the first question man it's just 
regardless of what our plans are, and you know, we think we've mapped it out and you know, you, you know crossed our T's, dotted our I's, and made sure everything was right, and this is how things can work. God, like, nah, God always says, I got something better for you, and I'm a wow you and amaze you every single time. So just wait. Sometimes you gotta be still, sometimes you just gotta listen, you know, and, and I, you know, I, I tell the young guys and I, you know, I'm like, okay, I was on practice squad at first when I signed. And I thought my role was to be, you know, leadership. You know, we had a fairly young team as leadership. I'll tell them if they're not in the situation they wanted to be in, just wait, God works in mysterious ways. They that wait on the Lord, you know, shall renew their strength. I tell them, hey, humble thyselves under the mighty hand of the Lord so that in due time, not your time, not my time, that in due time, he will exalt, you know, and, and So many of us on this roster, man. Trey Flowers came from Seattle and his his career was a little shaky this, to start this year. And look what God's done. Vernon Hargrave played with him with the Texans. His career was shaky at the beginning of this year. Cincinnati brought him in. Look what God has done. Think about Mike Daniels, veteran player just like myself on the practice squad. Yeah, some young guys on the practice squad. Have, you know, I did not get the opportunity to it. We were in a position to where they didn't have to play in a – like, starters didn't have to play in a Browns game. And a young guy, first game being active, gets a, a, a scoop and score for a touchdown. And I asked him, because he didn't – I don't think he suited up, you know, since then, no time in the playoffs. I asked him yesterday, would you trade it to play a little bit more during the regular season? Absolutely not, with a smile on his face. So it's, it's, it's just knowing that – God has the final say. He works in mysterious ways, and we just got to trust in him. That's it. Well, let me ask this as my final question, because you mentioned all those names, and it's such a cool thing to hear that it's not just, you know, smooth sailing in the NFL, and you know this, you've been in the league for a while, but something happens when a group of guys just get together, and you came in in whatever it was, week four, like you said, week five, and your first game, I think, was week eight, week nine, somewhere in there. Right. And you get this opportunity to come in. How were you able to make it work and fit into right. that culture, right? And I'm not just talking about fitting from a football perspective right. or even from okay. a re relationship perspective, but even from a spiritual perspective. How has that kind of evolved for you, you know, in doing that? Because it's, you weren't with a team through training camp and, right. you know, through OTAs and all that. You came in in the midst of a season that had already started. Right. And I think that's, that's the key. Like, in the midst of it all, I think, one, uh, when your reputation precedes you a little bit and, you know, they ask everybody to introduce themselves with a new player. Okay, stand up. Mike Thomas, who are you with last? Houston Texans. Okay, what year is this for you? Year 10. Then it's over. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Like, so there's there's a respect factor there. Um, you know, coaches obviously helping, you know, like kind of doctoring it up, you know, like, okay, well, you know, he's a Pro Bowl player. but So there's a respect factor kind of there, and it's been earned, right? But at the same time, coming in humble. Yeah, I've done all that. This is your 10 but shoot, I'm on practice squad. I'm, I'm just coming in. Y'all went to training camp together, OTAs together, so I got to earn y'all trust. So let me come in and just, how can I serve y'all? Regardless of what my role is or what type of respect I got, how can I serve you? Okay, I'm not playing. Y'all the ones that's playing. Let me teach you what I know. Mm -hmm. And if you're not in a position or you're not at a point where you want to be in your career with this team or whatever, and you're going through something, hey, well, I've experienced this before. I've been there. Maybe you should think about it like this. Hey, try this. Hey, I hear, I hear you think Coach is talking out of both sides and he's coming down on you. Let me tell you what he's really trying to say. And that's how you earn the trust of players. That's how you fit in. That's how you, you know, make it work. Mm. And that, that's just me being me. Yeah. Well, keep being you. I appreciate you, my friend. Uh, congratulations again. We'll all be watching uh, Super Bowl 56, February 13th. And just so happy for you. Uh, I hope you got, you get to experience that opening kickoff and you're running down and there's a thousand flashbulbs or you know, 60,000 flashbulbs all at once and you get to make that tackle. But either way, I'm just so happy for you, brother. Thanks for being here and uh, congrats again. Thank you so much for having me, Jason. It's a blessing, man.